All right, let's do the warm up. So we've got a cube with side length four. And I'm not going to be very good at drawing this picture, but I'm going to try my very hardest. And that cube is circumscribed about a sphere. So we've got a sphere in there, and it's the sphere is going to be tangent to the cube at all parts. So this is four, and therefore the diameter of the sphere would also be four, by the way. So what's the difference in the two solids' volumes? So we would find the volume of the cube, and we would find the volume of the sphere. And difference, of course, means subtract, so we will subtract them. The radius would be two. Yes, Jenny, the radius would. So the volume of the cube is going to be simply four cubed. Four cubed, that's the side, and find the volume of a cube. Yep, okay. So, very good. 64. The volume of the sphere, four thirds, we're not going to press the pi button, four thirds pi r cubed. So, four thirds times two to the third. Math, enter, enter. 32 thirds pi. Which one's larger? Hopefully we realize the cube is larger. So the, the exact answer would be that. And the approximate answer, oh, you're funny, Taha. The sphere is inside the cube. It can't be bigger. And the, exact, um, the approximate answer, let's go for approximate, 32 thirds times pi, 64 minus... Wow! Do you realize there's almost as much free space as there is space taken up by the sphere? So that's the exact answer. That's the answer you would put on a, a test or an assessment. How do you get fractions? Oh, um, you do math, enter, enter. Yeah, so when your 10.66 is in your calculator, when that number is sitting in your calculator, press math, enter, enter, and it'll turn it into a fraction, which is the only way you're allowed to put your answer. I'm, I'm so sorry this is the first time you've seen that. I think I've said that a lot. Maybe not. Okay. So isn't that weird that if a sphere is inside a cube and it's touching the cube at all sides that there's almost as much free space as there is space taken up by the sphere. That's crazy. So here's the homework answers to the spheres worksheet. The evens of the spheres. Lots of fractions there because when you're dividing by three you're, you're bound to get some fractions. So every time you're pressing math, enter, enter, math, enter, enter, instead of putting a repeating decimal. Jenny's <laughs> nightmare. No, I'm just kidding. You go to the store and you buy a three-pack of tennis balls, okay? So you go to the store and you buy, what kind of tennis balls, Jenny? What kind of tennis balls are we going to buy? Yeah. We're going to buy some Wilson tennis balls, and it's a three-pack. Three back. All right. We're going to find the ratio of the volume of the can. So, wait, what's the can? What shape? The volume of a cylinder to the volume of nice. three spheres. And it's going to be cool. Are you ready? Yeah, sure. So, we might have done something like we did, we had a question about which one. I don't remember what the question was, but it had to do with the height of the can. Anyways, how do you find the volume of the cylinder? Base times height, but that doesn't give us much information. What's the base? Pi r squared. Pi r squared times the height. Now, when I'm doing a ratio, when I'm comparing two things, I like to cancel out as much as possible because you're comparing them. You want to get them on the same level. You want to cancel out whatever you can. So instead of writing H for height, can you tell me the height of that can in terms of R? 
Tell me the height, but use the letter R. What is this R? Six R. Oh. H. Oh, I thought I was in Do you see? Or 3D. Six R. Or 3D, but I said use um, R. So the height would be 6R. That way we're only going to use R's. Got this? Are you putting this down on your homework if you didn't work this? Are you working it? All right, so the volume of the cylinder is pi R squared H. Are you okay with that? Yes. Pi R squared H divided by volume of a sphere. Four thirds pi R cubed, but how many are there? Three. There's three of them, don't forget. Wait. When do they cancel? Let's start canceling things. What would you like to cancel? Three. Let's do the pi first. John's saying, hey, what's three times four thirds? Four. Good, the three's canceled, it's four. It's twelve thirds, which is four. Very good. So let's rewrite the numerator. Ready? What's r squared times r? That's like saying r times r times r. Cubed. It's r cubed. Are we okay with that? Yes. There's two of them here. There's one of them here. Two plus one is three. Okay. So it's six r cubed over what's left down here? Four r cubed. It's left in the wreckage. Okay? Oh. What happens to the r's? Oh my god. Oh. What's the final answer? Two, three, four, six, three, two, three, three halves. Wow. <laughs> three halves. Is the final answer. We had no variables left. Everything canceled. So the answer is three halves. I thought that was a fun problem. All right. Okay, so we're going to look at number one. A lot of people just didn't understand what it meant on number one when it said that each edge is 10. So I bet if you knew what it meant, you would be able to solve it perfectly fine. So we've got equilateral triangular bases. So you draw an equilateral triangle, you draw an equilateral triangle. All right, let me do this. Okay, and then connect them. So there's what your prism looks like. And it's, my picture's deceiving because every edge of the figure, the edges, all the edges are 10 centimeters. So anytime you see a segment, anytime you see an edge, it's all 10. It's all 10. <laughs> Does that get my point across? Okay. So everything's 10. So we want to find the surface area. How do you find the surface area of a prism? P times H plus 2B. Where all of those variables mean something. So start with P. 30. 30. 30. 10 times 3. P stands for perimeter of the base. 300. Oh, you want me to just go ahead and put 300 because yeah. height's 10. Is that okay if I just put 0 on it? Okay. And then 2 times, ooh, this is the toughest part. I got, I got 24. Okay. Three. The area of the base is asking you to find the area of an equilateral triangle. Yeah. You may use this formula, side squared root 3 over 4. If you don't have that formula committed to memory, you can find the height, and you can do base times height divided by 2. It's so up to you. That's 100 root 3? Okay. So 100 root 3 over 4. What's 100 divided by 4? 25. 25. Yeah, so it's 25 root 3. Yeah. Did you not double it, maybe? I doubled it. 25 times 2 I, I, I guess 625. 25 times 2. Oh, right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Now I get it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, so, a right prism, all it means is that the prism is perpendicular. It just, there, everything's right. All of our prisms are right. All of our pyramids are right. So you can ignore that word from now on. Okay, anything else from one through four? Number uh, three again? Um, and you number three? No, number four. What's the answer for number four? The answer number four, 540. Okay. I'm going to go one to four. You want to go to the next four, guys? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Number five is nine centimeters, 64 cubic centimeters, 
10.5, very good. 3, 6, 8, 0, over 3 centimeters cubed. Yes. yes. Number 6. 12, 26, 2 over 3. So you don't simplify it? Over which one? For the last one. So if my answer is over 3 and your answer is over 3 and our numerators are different, then it's the wrong answer. Okay. okay. Number 6. Oh, six, seven, and you need eight? <laughs> uh, I hate to interrupt one more time. This okay, is Mr. Zimmerman. I have a uh, staffing for two of my favorite students that uh, visit me during the year. If you uh, are their teachers, we need you to stop by the conference room right across from 1603. We appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a pyramid, and the sides of the base are eight. The slant height is 5. Find the volume. I know immediately to find volume, I need height. I can't use the slant height for volume. L is not in the formula for volume. So the first thing I would do is I would draw the height. The height goes from the peak straight to the center of the base. Boom. Right there. And then it always forms a right triangle like that. So that's 5. This is 4. This is four. Ooh, that's a Pythagorean triple. 3. Four, five. Three is the height. What? Three, four, five triangle. I've never heard of that. What? How have you been sitting in my class all year and not heard of a three, I, four, I, five I, triangle? I, I've three heard. squared plus four squared is five squared. She showed us the whole slide. Remember like six, eight, ten? Six, eight, ten. Oh, there's tons of them. Five, twelve, thirteen. <coughs> Nine, twelve, oh. fifteen. They're all called triples. Anyways. All right. So we're going to do base sums height divided by three. Area of the base, what is it? Yeah. Oh, 64. Yeah. Height is 3. Divided by 3, 3 is cancel, and you get 64. <laughs> so excited. She's like, she gets so enthusiastic. <laughs> I love math. Okay, um, so that was 6. So I still, am I still doing 7? What, Sean? You don't need to do any. I was just curious of how to So you do get why the answer is the answer? Oh, I just copied the wrong one, didn't I? Seven. Every time it's going to happen every time. So don't get surprised anymore. <laughs> okay, so we are given volume. So the first thing I would do when I see volume and they handed it to me, I would say that this equals, and then I would write the volume formula for a pyramid. Uh, base times height divided by three, because three pyramids fit into a prism. All right. Um, its base is a right triangle, so draw yourself a little right triangle. And the legs are 3.5 and 4, so it is not isosceles. Darn. Find the height, and when they say height, they mean the height of the prism, not the height of the base. Okay. So, we're looking for H. Can we fill in B? Do we know what capital B is? Yeah. We're about to find out, right? How do you find the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by 2. They gave you the base and the height because they told you it was a right triangle. Seven. So instead of B, we're going to put seven. How would you solve for H? What's the opposite of divide by three? Times three. So we'll do 24.5 times three. And then divide by seven. Well, because we're going to get 73.5 equals seven H. The opposite of multiply is divide. Wait, divide wait. by 7, you get 10.5. How did you get 73.5? I multiply by 3. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. Oh, you, oh I thought you multiply 7 by 3. Mm. You do, but then the 3's cancel. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. Law of algebra. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 7, are we okay on 7 now? Yeah. Let's move on oh, yeah. to the next cluster. Okay. Number nine. It asks for two things. The surface area is 800 pi, and the volume is 2,560 pi. Number 10, 24. Number 11, 24 pi. And number 12 is 50. 11. Okay. 
Okay, let's do 10 first, then we'll do 11. Number 10, ready? We don't care that it's right, so we're going to ignore the word right. A right cylinder, it just means it's not the Leaning Tower of Pisa. A right cylinder has a radius of 3 and a height of 8. A cone has the same radius. Find the height of the cone if they have the same volume. It's probably going to be taller than the cylinder to make up for the fact that it's a cone. But anyways. Um, what are a radius of 3? Three? 3. Okay. So you ready? We're going to find the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a cone. Volume of a cylinder. Base times height. The base is a circle. What's the area of a circle? Oh, 9. 9 pi. Pi R squared, so 9, I'll take it, 9 pi times the height. Okay, so that's the volume of the cylinder. We want it to equal the volume of the cone. And how do you find volume of the cone? Good, base, pi R squared times, well I'm not going to put R, I'm going to put 3. Pi R squared times the height divided by 3. Now, we could simplify both sides, or we could just start crossing things out. I love crossing things out. Do you like to? I think it's fun. Ready? There's a pi on both sides. You're gone. There's a 3 squared on both sides. You're gone. So now 8 equals, wait, what's left over here? Opposite of dividing by 3. It's so multiplying by 3. 8 times 3? 24. So that cone has to be really, 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 really tall to make up for the fact that it has a less volume than a cylinder. Yep. I did actually. I actually did it differently. Was it quicker than our way? I mean, it was. It was the same. It was the same time. Well, I, you could have just said, "Hey, I know the volume of this is one third the volume of this, so I just need to take the height and triple it." You could have said that, but I wanted to make sure we knew where it came from. But uh, I, uh, I should, I should. Uh, what do you call that? I wrote gibberish. Yeah, can I just show it to you? It's just yes, too you much can, to yes, you can show it to me. Um, let me get the next one ready. The next one we're doing is 11. Oh, you didn't start crossing things out. You actually found it. That's good. Yeah. That'll work. Yes. How come, like, the first cylinder says V equals VH? Yeah. It also can be I R squared times H. So, for a cylinder... Like just in general, because like the formulas are different. Yes, the formulas are different. Well, they're the same, but they're different. Yeah, so good. the formula for a prism is base times height. Because a prism can have all sorts of bases. Its base can be a triangle, a square, a rectangle. But a cylinder, what is its base every single time? Circle. A circle. So the formula is correct. It's base times height. But in our notes, we told you that it's pi r squared times h. Because in this one, the base never changes. The base is always a circle. So instead of B, we put pi r squared. That's the same thing with cones. So just like same thing with cone, because the base doesn't change. Whereas in a prism, the base does change. I didn't. Okay. Cool. Nope, nothing's messed up. We're just trying to simplify it. All right, so this one is not a tough problem, but it has a really tough algebra trick hidden in it. So I'll show that to you, but um, if you had to do this problem on the test tomorrow, you might have the same problem, but it won't have the root, the square root 6. But I'm still going to show you how to do this one. All right, surface area of a sphere with a volume of that. So I'm going to write that, 8 pi root 6, and I'm going to make it equal my volume formula. What's the volume formula for a sphere? 4 Cubed. Cubed. Because it's 3D, it's volume. Okay. Oh, so far, all I've done is written the volume and made it equal the volume formula. I just set it equal to the volume formula on my formula chart. I haven't done anything yet. Okay, let's cancel out what we can cancel. Hi. Hi, you're gone. Sorry, bye. Adios. How can I get rid of four thirds all at once? <coughs> You could multiply by 3 and divide by 4. You want to do the opposite. You could divide by 4 thirds 
You could multiply by three-fourths. There's lots of different ways. I personally, since the calculator does all the hard work, I just like to just divide, just get rid of it by the dividing. I divide by four-thirds. But it's up to you what you want to do. So I would go to my calculator and I would type eight divided by parentheses four-thirds. But if you want to multiply by three and divide by four, you can do that. So if you're multiplying it's eight by four-thirds? No, you're dividing it by four-thirds because you're getting rid of it. Six. Ten point six. No, it's just plain old six. Eight divided by four-thirds, if you put parentheses around it, is six. So on this side, do you agree that we've got six root six? And on this side, all that's left is r cubed. What's the opposite of cubing something? Cube rooting. Cube rooting. Do you all know how to get to the cube root button? You. You. Math. Four. Now, I'm not actually going to ask you to cube root that because you're going to get a decimal. But if I asked you this on the test, we would give you a number that has a perfect cube root. So pretend it was like 216. Everyone try it. Math 4. Math 4. 216. What do you get? 6. Six. That's just an example of cube rooting something. Okay. Now, let me just help you out real quick. When you square root something, and a number escapes. What mean? What did that mean? Yes, true. When we are factor treating something, are we? What are we looking for? Doubles, triples, singles. Double. We're looking for doubles. So, do you agree? If I wanted to put him back under the square root, what would be under there? A third. Okay. So that one escaped, and there's one already there. So. Is rewriting that, is that okay with you? It would be six. Well, I'm not done yet. But is that set from there to there okay with you? Yeah. Okay. When you are cube rooting something, you are looking for not pairs. You're looking for triplets. So this, and I don't know, what the six people have superstitions and think that this is kind of weird. But anyways, this is root six times root six times root six. Okay, if I want to cube root that, I'm looking for triplets. Do you see a triplet? Yes. What is it? It's not six, it's, what is it three of? It's root six. There's three of what number of root six? Oh. So that's R. But will you have to do what we just did? No. Did I want to show you it? Is that a good K-level problem that you might see in algebra? Yes. So I still wanted to expose you to it. So anyways, long story short, the radius is square root of 6. So now let's plug that into our handy dandy surface area formula. Surface area, pi r, oh sorry, sorry I said 4. 4 pi r squared. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. What happens when you square a radical? The Cancels. What's 4 times 6? And that's where the 24 came from. So 4 times 6. 4 times 6. What's the square root of 6 squared? Square root of 6 squared. No, it's just 6. Because they cancel. The square root and the squared. So, would I ask you to go backwards? Yes. Would I ask you to cube root a mixed number? No. Let's move on. I think we've given that problem enough of our life already. Um, let's finish off the answers. I can go over that one if we want to. 13. The answer to 13 is 13. And then this one is 10,648. So any of those, 12, 13, 14, all three of them? Are you going to work number 12? Yeah, you want me to right now? Yeah. Let's do it. Ready? Number 12. I like this one. Oh, man. Kind of cut off the A and the B. Let's try again. <coughs> there you go. Okay. Thanks for your encouragement. Okay, ready? I'm going to make this really large so that we can see this cube really well. Okay. They told us that AG is 5. And that's all we've got to work with. So I want you to connect A to G, and I want you to put 5. What are we trying to find? 
the surface area. The surface area of the cube. The surface area. So the surface area of a cube. Uh, a cube, by the way, is a prism. Is that okay? Yeah. But to find the surface area of a cube, once you know one of the sides, what can you do? Square. Oh, uh, find the area of a square. And then how many squares are there on a cube? Six. Six. So are we okay with me using that formula, even though that's not on your formula chart? You square a side, and then there's six of them, because it's a cube. Six sides. So now we just need to find a side. We don't know a side yet. Now, be really careful. We are going to use Pythagorean theorem, because there's right triangles in a cube. But we're going to use Pythagorean theorem with this, the purple one, and be careful, this one right down there. Do you see the right triangle we made? What do you want to call the sides? Give me a letter. Let's not use S because people always think it's a 5. T. Okay. Our sides are T. So I'm going to call that T. That's T. That's T. What is AF? Do you agree that ABF is a 45, 45, 90 triangle? Yes. T, T. T root 2. So you Is divide that okay, by Deandra? Yeah. So you divide 5 by T root 2. No, because this one is not a 45, 45, 9. Okay, what, whose theorem do we use when we have right triangles? Pythagoras. Pythagorean <laughs> theorem. <laughs> A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Who did I lose? A squared, B squared, C squared, A, B, and C. A, B, and C of my triangle? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. T squared is just T squared. T squared is T squared. What's square root of two squared? Two. two. So I'm going to stick it to you right there. Five squared. What's T squared plus two T squared? Three T squared. Uh, three T squared. <laughs> uh, opposite of multiplying by three? Dividing by three? T squared equals 25 over three. It's the opposite of squaring something. Square rooting. Now, if it's okay with you, I'm going to leave the side really ugly. I'm going to leave it like that, even though if that was our final answer, we couldn't leave it like that. Because you know what we're about to do to it? We're about to square it. So I'm not going to make it all pretty because I'm about to square it and get rid of that radical. Where did we say we were putting the side in? Six sides squared. Six times the side squared. What happens when I square that? Cancel. So you're really just doing six times 25 thirds. And it's a beautiful answer. It's 50. I didn't get that. Six times 25 divided by three? Six times 25 thirds? Wait, so it doesn't affect the six? You had to, you should have squared that. You didn't square it. Okay, so it doesn't affect the six. Six, six times 25, and then divided by three. Six times 25 is 150. 150 divided by three is 50. Oh, you're talking about when I squared? It doesn't, no, it's six times side squared. You don't square the six. Oh. So if like if you find you know, the hypotenuse to me, don't you automatically know it's a three four five? No, unfortunately no. Um a three four five is a Pythagorean triple, but you have to know two of the sides to get that. You can't just know one side. Because there's all sorts of right triangles that have a hypotenuse of five. Okay. It's sure. not three four five. Hmm. Set it up the equation to uh, 90 pi equals pi 5 L plus pi 5 squared. So pi five. R L, that's a 5, pi R L plus pi R squared. Yeah. Sounds fabulous. That was a good first step.
And then I cancel the pies. Good, you can do that. Every single term has a pie. So it's totally legal to cancel those out because everybody had a pie. It's fair. I promise. Promise, promise, promise. Let's see what's left. 90 equals okay. 5L plus 25O. Oh, subtract 25 divided by 5. Cool. Very good. Very good setup. What's the volume of the smallest box? So that just means the soccer ball is going to be inscribed in the box. Okay? The smallest box that will hold a soccer ball with a diameter of 22. So this is actually going to be a really quick problem. So we agree it's going to be a cube, right? Because if you're going to hold a sphere and you want the sphere to touch every single side, it's going to have to be perfect. It's going to be a cube. So we agree it's going to be the cube and we're finding the volume of a cube. The way you find the volume of a cube is you take a side and you cube it. We talked about that today. It's just side times side times side. Like if the size is 4, the volume is 4 times 4 times 4. Length times what times that. So anyways, how long is one of the sides? Well, if the diameter of the sphere is 22, how long are the sides of this cube? 22. 22. So really the only thing you're doing in this problem is you're taking 22 and you are cubing it. You are turning the number 22 into a cube. You're cubing it and it becomes a very large number.